there, my name's Deandra, I'm a GM support player and a few months ago with the help of my partner Gethin I was able to play some bronze games on an alt account. I climbed a silver by myself with an 82% win rate and for a while now I've wanted to talk about the experience and share some tips. So for starters, why did I do this? Well, it happened back during that brief resurgence of discussion on whether Mercy has impact. I was a little tired of the conversation. There are so many Mercy players out there doing great things and it just feels a little dismissive towards them to say she doesn't have impact. The other thing is that a lot of people feel Mercy can't carry, she's bad at low ranks and she's team dependent. The only one of those I believe to be true is the last one and I wanted to prove it. Mercy is a team reliant character, but she gets benefits from it and those benefits are really useful in bronze. There's three in particular I want to talk about, so let's go through them. The first two overlap a lot, so I'm going to discuss them together. I'm referring to Mercy's healing and mobility, which needs teammates, but that's what allows it to have one of the shortest cooldowns. Anyway, in bronze, I had matches where I'd heal 20,000 in 10 minutes or close to that. I was able to get these high numbers by treating Valkyrie like a cooldown, which I'll talk about later on, and minimizing my deaths, which is really the key to some very high carrying potential. On paper, Moira, Anna, and Baptiste out heal her, but that doesn't always transfer over into an in-game environment. They have a resource meter or aiming with downtime to reload, while Mercy can pump out healing infinitely with a single button press. She brings simplicity and more importantly consistency and at bronze that is one of if not the most important thing you can have, but Mercy has to stay alive. So dying less is the answer, but how do you achieve that when teammates aren't likely to peel or provide help? Well, what I noticed is that a lot of enemies in bronze will ignore Mercy as long as she sticks to the outskirts of a fight or plays from higher ground. In this footage D.Va knocks me off out of mail by the way, then leaves me alone. Mercy's beam is bright and can show you where she is, but almost no one in bronze looks out for this. Sometimes you can play while positioned behind enemies and they won't actually notice, but I wouldn't recommend it. I noticed that two kinds of enemies go after Mercy in bronze, ones that will give up immediately and others that won't give up at all, like they will go to the ends of the earth to make sure she's dead. Both can be played around the same way, constant guardian angel usage, although if enemies are too much then Moira might be a good swap. The key is to track whoever's after you and play around their mobility. For example, Tracer doesn't have vertical movement, so head for high ground if she's after you. One of the only characters that would consistently come for me were Moira's. I guess she knows the power of focusing supports. Her fade has a cooldown of 6 seconds and no real vertical movement, so again, Guardian Angel can help you play around her as long as you're keeping track of allies and available fly paths. If Guardian Angel is on cooldown and Valkyrie is ready, using it will make it active again, and this can be so useful if you do mess up your positioning. I noticed a lot of Bronze Mercies don't tend to cancel the GA early and they end up too close to allies. Keeping distance and playing corners really is the key to Mercy. Super Jump is also great in Bronze, although it's more important to practice positioning so you don't need it. If you're unfamiliar, Super Jump is a Mercy bug where she flings herself into the air by pressing crouch as she uses GA. It's great against Genji and Tracer in particular. One of the main uses should be for getting to high ground if you have no allies on it since all you need is them nearby. Also, there's a lot of terrain in Overwatch that you can slide off and aiming for that while super jumping can be really useful as it'll give you a little bit more speed. Playing as a full team can also be rare in Bronze, sometimes it works in Mercy's favour and provides a great range of fly paths she can ping pong between, sometimes everyone's a bit too split, but I found those situations really really rare. In those moments I would probably pick an ally like Roadhog who's got great pick potential, little mobility and sustain and stay with them. A very common mistake I see low ranked Mercy players make is that they focus their camera view on whoever they're healing. I've covered before that Mercy can do her job while looking in any direction she wants, and this should be used almost constantly. Looking around will also help fight tunnel vision as you're forced to take in the environment around you. Sometimes you have to start healing another ally before your current target is full, and keeping track of everyone will allow you to do that effectively. Going back to the benefits, the third is Mercy's health regeneration, and I love this part of her kit. It kicks in after a second of not taking damage, and it's not an ability with a cooldown. Like, compare this to Baptiste, who can only heal himself with his shift every 15 oh, seconds. I want you to watch my health in this clip. I had so many fights like this one where the enemy would ignore me as long as I didn't play in the middle of a brawl, meaning it wasn't hard to get health regeneration active during a fight. In bronze, you may not trust your second healer. Hell, before Rolock, you might not even have had one. But Mercy's health regeneration? Although it's only 20 per second, it's always going to be there and you know how to activate it. Next I'm going to talk about Valkyrie. I've always been vocal that I like it as an ultimate, so I might be biased here, but I thought it was really, really good in bronze. I was actually very surprised at how little moments I had where I thought, actually, you know what, I wish I had Mass Res here. Bronze Valkyrie is amazing for three reasons, the mobility, the small perks given to Mercy, and surprisingly, mass healing because it isn't resourced. 
Keep in mind, I played before the global 12% ult charge nerf, and one of the reasons mass healing was so powerful is because I had it every fight, so that might be a little weaker now. As I say, bronze players will generally ignore Mercy if she plays on high ground or above the fight, and Valkyrie gives you more control with that, plus health regeneration is constantly active. This makes Valkyrie Mercy extremely hard to kill as long as she's careful. Mercy should not go straight towards the skybox after activating Valkyrie, as characters like McCree and Soldier will hold on to their ultimates to counter it. During this Hollywood defense, the enemy team ran Mei and Doomfist for DPS, so when I ulted, I just stayed above point, and you'll notice I take next to no damage while it's active. However, if they did have hit scans like McCree and Soldier or Widow, I'd play more in this area where I've got corners to my left and right that I can quickly fall behind. Valkyrie also makes resurrections much easier, and in bronze allows her to go for some pretty risky ones. You don't want to get cocky though, plus going for dangerous reses can build bad habits that will get you killed when you climb the ranks that are more punishing. Auto or non-intensive aim are probably your biggest concerns, let me show you this clip. I may die some point and I want to res, so I activate alt and go for it, thinking it'll be enough to cover me. The turret locks on, which brings Torb's attention to me, and I go down with my alt now gone. One method I've been using a lot lately is to repeatedly hit the crouch key, which makes you descend during Valkyrie, and this then makes you more slippery. I really recommend it, actually. Other small perks include double guiding angel and healing beam length, which allows you to do your job while even further away from the fight or allies. This is also useful if the team is split up, as Mercy can ping pong between everyone. On payload attack, Mercy isn't a great car pusher, and she contributes a lot more pushed up with the DPS. In bronze, you might not have a choice, and double beam length is great here if allies are pushed ahead. Mass damage boost is generally the most powerful part of Valkyrie and can be absolutely devastating in bronze, but the other parts of it are just as good in my opinion. If my team was in a fight we hadn't already won or lost, I'd frequently use Valkyrie as soon as I got it. It can be worth saving though, defense especially, because it has so many useful components for when you misplay. And then there's the pistol. I really recommend practicing it because with infinite ammo it can be super deadly. You just can't tunnel vision with it. I generally set myself a rule of, if I miss the first few shots, just give up and go back to beaming. The last thing you want is a kill feed where you've got two pistol kills and three dead allies. Vara and snipers are the easiest targets, as are enemies that have gotten isolated from their healers. Moving on, let's talk about damage boost, and if you're familiar with my content, you'll know I'm a huge advocate of it. Generally, I aim for a minimum of 1,500 damage amplified per comp match. In bronze, you might assume that allies are damage magnets, and the DPS have wonky aim, so damage boost is hard to get value from. My results were a bit mixed. There were a couple of games where I struggled because I was constantly healing, but I also had plenty where I got above 1,800, especially as I got closer to silver and past it. Getting value from damage boost is really important in bronze because Mercy's already likely to outheal the other healers, while using damage boost will put her ahead of other Mercy players who don't. I give out this advice a lot, but I play Mercy by holding down right click and making damage boost my default beam state, then hitting heal when I need it. This method is really good for building a habit where you heal someone to full, immediately start damage boosting and flick back when necessary, and getting in these tiny moments throughout the match absolutely adds up. I have a bronze VOD review on my channel, and there are definitely moments of missed damage boost. It's not even limited to bronze, actually. I see this constantly from Mercies at every rank, where they heal someone to full and just keep on heal mode. Like, I see clips get posted on Reddit and Twitter of really cool Mercy plays, but there's no sign of that blue beam. In bronze, I would maybe prioritize less aim-intensive heroes with damage boosts, like Symmetra, Junkrat, and Mei. Reaper's also a powerhouse with his lifesteal that'll partially cover healing. I also saw a lot of Ash players in my games, which surprised me because snipers are heavily aim based, but she brings a lot of value from Dynamite and Bob, which are both crazy good damage boost targets. It's really important to remember that it's not just DPS who can output damage. If you're worried about their performance, your tanks and supports, which you're now guaranteed to have with Rollock enabled, can output a lot of damage too. Roadhog, Ryan, and Sigma especially. Just remember, a lot of tanks are short ranged. Going back to the bronze VOD review, here I commend a player for using damage boost, but mention D.Va spread is very harsh. If enemies are on the other side of this room, Genji is the better boost target here. If you're boosting your second support, keep in mind that both healers focused on damage, so make sure you keep an eye out on the rest of your team. Let's start wrapping things up. From my experience, C9s happen constantly in bronze, like almost every other game, and if you don't know what that is, it's where everyone leaves the objective in overtime to chase kills, leading to round end. If you can, try your best to prevent them, like keep an eye on the clock, the objective, etc. Also Moira, in the past I'd recommend Mercy to a new player who was looking for a simple entry support. After the cast time added to res and heal nerf, I'd actually say Moira's probably easier and more forgiving. Whether this is a good thing or not is down to personal opinion, but I quite like Mercy having more skill-based aspects to her. 
That being said, there is a lot of merit to Mercy and she's really fun to play, plus she can only get better as you climb. In my opinion, her and Moira have quite a few transferable skills and there's no harm in learning both. Moira can be better if you're struggling with positioning or the enemy is heavily flanking because she can sustain herself with damage. Plus, sometimes Mercy's healing isn't enough. When you're in bronze, I feel like the best move is to learn general skills that can transfer between characters like game sense and positioning, because you can climb with any hero. Anyway, that's all from me this week. I know I wasn't super in-depth, but I've got plenty of guides and tips in the rest of my YouTube videos. Thank you so much for watching, feel free to check out my Patreon, and have a nice day!